Hello friends and welcome to another gardening vlog. We finally have some sun in the north of England. Well, having said that, it's only been a couple of days but we'll take whatever sun that we can get. And as you can see, we had some glorious blue skies. I decided to do a few quick garden jobs because I had the misfortune of catching a summer cold of all the things to catch during summer and during the two days that we get the sunniest weather. I got a summer cold but I tried to make the best of it so this is me recovering from the summer cold and I wanted to do just a little bit a few things here and there in the garden because I do find that the being in the garden really it does cheer me up and it helps me to focus less on what I'm missing out on by the lack of health and more on the things that I can enjoy and one thing I do love about gardening is it gets me to think about the metaphors of life. I feel as though ever since I started gardening, I picked up quite a few little um, pearls here and there. And as I was doing this uh, recovering from the summer cold, one of the jobs that I had to do was to uh, provide support for the climbing plants. So at first it was the sweet peas and those are the flowering peas. And in this raised garden here in the vegetable garden, I'm providing support for the monge too, which is the sugar snap peas. And in my... Um, uh, congested uh, state of mind and separately I just realized as I was editing this video that I look pregnant but I'm not actually pregnant in I'm just really bloated from the illnesses and from all the antihistamines that I've been having to take so I'm not actually <laughs> pregnant just wanted to point that out because I didn't actually realize how bad the bloating is but anyway uh, getting back to the gardening um, as I was uh, tying the stakes to the sweet peas, I had to look at each uh, individual uh, plant and sort of think, okay, well, what's going to be the best way to support it? Where Should I put the support um, over to the north side or the south side? Because they tend to grow towards the light and how to tie them up and the tie can't be too tight because then it prevents the plant from growing really well and that got me to thinking about how actually in life uh, particularly as a parent when you're raising children you are creating an environment very similar to what is done in gardening and sort of thinking about how you try and provide the support so that they can grow the children or whoever is in your care can grow so that they can produce fruit appropriately and they don't become stagnant. And it got me thinking, well, if I was a plant uh, that needed support, what am I staking myself to? What is it that I am holding onto in order to grow and to be abundant? I haven't come up with the answer, but it certainly got me thinking. So that was some other pearl that I thought was quite insightful when I was doing my little gardening chores that just quickly morphed into bigger and bigger chores. So I just decided, well, since I'd sorted out the sweet peas, it's about time I harvested the onions because the stalks had fallen over. And that's one way that you know your onions are ready to be harvested. The stalk that's normally upright that just sort of like bends over and falls down. Now, the problem is when I first sowed the sets for these onions, we have a problem with pigeons um, and squirrels pulling at them. So we tend to have to put these grids over the onion sets until they're fully established and then we're supposed to remove them. However, I forgot to get that done. So they grew up and around the grid that was there initially to protect them from the pigeons and the squirrels. And so now I have a situation where I had to do a lot of heavy lifting, trying to effectively lift up this wire grid that was over the entire bed where the onion stalks had sort of flopped over. And what made it more challenging is the fact that I was trying to do this with as minimal damage as possible to the um, onion stalks because you need 
those for the curing process so there was some damage there was no getting away from that and probably about 25 percent of the onions lost some of their stalks which is not ideal but really i've learned my lesson next time not to put off the removing of the grid and so it was a uh, time to get on with harvesting the onions and another way that you can tell that onions are ready is that you begin to see that coloring the gold coloring that you'd see in super supermarket onions growing onions is one of my favorite things to do because they are so useful we actually use onions almost on a daily basis to uh, cook they and garlic are about the only things that I can very consistently easily grow in our clay soil um, here where we live in West Yorkshire. It's a very heavy clay soil. And for the last few years now, this is something that we know we can count on every single year. We'll get some good, decent harvests for garlic and for onions. And so these ones were overwintering onions. That's to say that we planted them out in the autumn last year and then they grow, establish themselves, slow down during the winter period, the winter months, and then they begin to bulb up in spring and ideally ready to um, pull out by mid-June. And then you can start the cycle all over again. And that's uh, so these ones were now ready they had bulbed up beautifully and so got those out but by this point i was beginning to flag so i got my son to come out and help because he loves being in the garden and helping out in the garden and then he harvested the rest of the onions and the garlic as well the onions need to be cured and we use these wire grids to hang them up on and we'll put them out in the sun to cure them for about three to four weeks depending on whether the sun is being cooperative or not but we just we've had a really good garlic harvest this year now this garlic variety is called Provence white and it is a really good one and as I said, our soil is a very heavy clay soil. And if you can get garlic to grow in that soil, I'm pretty sure that it will do well in whatever other soil. So this uh, Provence white is a really good variety. And so when we're harvesting the garlic, it's important to be uh, quite gentle with it because it also needs to be cured in the same way that the onions need to be cured. And with garlic, how you can tell that they're ready to be um, harvested, most of the leaves begin to turn yellow. So the leaves on our garlic, they were no longer the lovely verdant green that they had been a few weeks ago. And so I pulled up a couple just to check if they were ready and for sure they had fattened up beautifully and they were ready. And one of the joys of harvesting garlic on a sunny day is you begin to get that lovely fresh garlic smell that's activated by the sun. So we had this whole area smelling of um, garlic and then it was time for us to get them ready for the curing process so we just thread them through these wire grids basically and we have them set um, sort of laying against any wall and this particular wall it is a east facing wall so it does get quite a lot of sun um, during most of the day and we just have to watch the weather like a hawk if there's any threat of rain we'll move the grids into the greenhouse because we don't want them to get wet and they should be ready again in about three to four weeks so what started off as oh it's just going to be a simple tying um, up of the peas and adding the support turned out to be <laughs> a pretty major a day in the garden we got to harvest the onions and the garlic well thank you so much for hanging out with me as i was pattering about in the garden wherever you are in the world i wish you blue skies help and happiness and hopefully we'll see you next time as we continue in our efforts to fight the pests and now we're having to deal with the pigeons and we've been trying to construct defenses appropriately until next time, bye.